Okay, now what we're going to learn how to do now is we're going to learn how to find the lengths of these x and y components. Um, but I'm not going to show you how to do that right now. Um, right now I want to do something else. Right now I'm just going to tell you how long the x and the y components are. Um, so how long is this uh, x component? I'm just going to tell you that it has a length of 3. It turns out that this has a length of 3. Where did I get this number 3? Well, we'll see where we got that from in a second. Uh, maybe you already can see how to get the 3. But anyway, I'm just going to tell you this is 3. I'm just going to tell you that this number over here is 4, and this one is 3. Now, this is actually not quite right because we haven't yet indicated the directions of the components. We should also be indicating the directions of these components. Um, for example, we know that this x component is pointing to the right, and we've chosen right as our positive direction. We're pointing to the right, and right is our positive direction. So the only correct way to write this is that the x component is positive 3. This is a very important point. It might seem trivial, but it's crucial. v sub x is not 3. It's positive 3, because this um, component is pointing to the right, and we chose right as our positive direction. We don't have to choose right as our positive direction, but if we do, then this has to be positive 3. And what should be the sign on v sub y? Pause for a second and determine the sign on v sub y. Well, we've decided that the y component is pointing up, and we chose up as our positive direction. So v sub y should be positive 4. That seems trivial, but it's crucial. If you write down that v sub x is 3, that's wrong. v sub x is not 3. It's positive 3. And v sub y is not 4. It's positive 4. Very important to keep putting the signs. Now, normally in mathematics, normally when something is positive, we don't normally indicate its sign. If I tell you that something's positive, we usually leave the sign out. So if I'm talking about the number positive 3, I would usually write positive 3 like this. Usually we write positive numbers without indicating the signs. But that's not acceptable in this branch of physics. In this branch of physics, it's going to lead us to confusion and mistakes if we leave out the signs. So we need to include the signs not just in front of negative numbers, but also in front of positive numbers. Let's start trying to get into that habit, showing the signs in front of both negative and positive numbers. Now you can see why it was so important to get the right arrows on the components. If we don't get the right arrows on the components, then we can't figure out the right sign on v sub x and v sub y. Now, what would we do if we just wanted to talk about the length of this side without talking about its sign? How would we refer to the length of this side without mentioning um, what direction it was pointing in? Well, there's a name for that concept that you might have already heard. Uh, a length without a sign is called a magnitude. Uh, if we want a number that doesn't really have a sign, we just look for a magnitude. Um, so what I'm really asking is how would we write the magnitude of this side? Well, the magnitude of this side is 3. The length of this side is 3, if we're not going to actually indicate the sign. But what would, be, what would be a good variable, then, for this number? Well, I can't just use v sub x, because v sub x stands for the sines number. So we need a separate symbol for when we're just talking about the magnitude of the component. This symbol indicates the signed component, so we need a separate symbol for when we're just talking about the magnitude of the component. Now, unfortunately, um, most textbooks and instructors don't use a separate symbol for when they're talking about magnitudes and for when they're talking about um, signed numbers. Most textbooks would use the same symbol for both, of, for both of these. Most textbooks use the same symbols for both of these concepts. Um, and that's okay for the person who wrote the textbook because they're so good at physics that they don't get confused by using the same symbol. And it's okay for your instructor because they're so good at physics that they don't get confused by using the same symbol. But we're not that good at physics yet. We're going to get horribly confused if we use the same symbol for two different things. Beginning students tend to get really confused if they try to use the same symbol for different things. So we are going to have to have a separate symbol for when we're talking about the component and when we're talking about the magnitude of the component. Uh, and since, unfortunately, the textbooks don't have a good symbol for that, I'm going to invent one right now. I think the simplest symbol we could use is a dot. So in these videos, whenever we're talking about a magnitude, I'm going to indicate that with a dot. So these are the two correct notations that we could use for this side of the triangle. Um, if we use um, just v sub x without a dot, that means we're referring to the signed number, the vector compo uh, the component. 
But if I use v sub x with a dot, that means we're just talking about the length or the magnitude of this side, uh, and then we don't need to indicate the sign. The, the reason for that is magnitudes are always positive. Lengths and magnitudes are always positive, so it would be kind of silly to include the signs on that. We know a magnitude is positive up front, so it would be silly and confusing and a little bit wrong to say this is positive 3. There's no way a magnitude could be negative. By definition, magnitudes are absolute values. By definition, magnitudes are like absolute values. They never can be negative, so there's no point saying that they're always positive. So here's the two notations we would use. Um, the regular symbol indicates the signed component, and the symbol with the dot indicates the magnitude of the component. By, by the way, textbooks do have a symbol for magnitudes. They might, say, use a symbol like this. They might use this symbol to show that we're just talking about the magnitude uh, of a component, or something like that. Uh, but this is such a complicated uh, symbol that the textbook writers actually, they might mention this, but they almost never actually use it when they're solving problems. This symbol is kind of so complicated and cumbersome that textbooks don't really actually use it very much when they're actually solving problems. So it's good to know that this is a symbol for magnitude, but this is a little bit too complicated for people to actually use it in solving problems. It's much simpler just to use a dot to show when you're taking a magnitude. Um, so even though this is the official symbol in the textbooks, I, I don't think it is very useful, so we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to use the symbol that I invented, which is a dot. So let's write down the magnitude of the vertical component. What's the magnitude of the vertical component? Well, 4. We wouldn't want to say positive 4 here because magnitudes are always positive. And what symbol should I use for the magnitude of the y component? Pause the video and write that down. We know we indicate magnitudes with a dot. So when we put in the dot, we don't show the sign, because magnitudes are always positive. But if we don't include the dot, we have to show the sign. OK, um, so uh, here's the notation we're going to be uh, using for that. Let's go back to the overall vector. You might wonder why we didn't show a sign on the overall vector. Well, it turns out that it never really makes sense to use a sign for an overall vector. It never makes sense to use a sign for an overall vector um, because this is not parallel to either axis. So it's not really clear what the sign on this is supposed to be. Um, overall vectors don't have signs. Overall vectors don't have signs. You can only have a sign if you're parallel to one of the two axes. We knew that this vector was pointing in the positive direction because it was parallel to the positive x-axis. And we knew that this um, vertical side was pointing in the positive direction because it was parallel to the positive y-axis. But the overall vector isn't parallel to either axis. Since the overall vector isn't parallel to either axis, there's no real clear sense to, saying whether it's, to, to talking about whether it's pointing in the positive or the negative direction. So we never indicate a sign on the overall vector. Um, and since we never, um, so we always just talk about the magnitude of the overall uh, vector. Here we're clearly just talking about this uh, 5 as a magnitude. Um, so there's no point putting a sign in here. Um, if you wanted to, you could use a dot to show that this is a magnitude, but I'm not going to do that. Um, we don't need to put a dot on here to show this is a magnitude because we need to know that um, overall vectors, the number all, only can only ever indicate the magnitude. The number for an overall vector can only ever indicate a magnitude. Um, so we need the dot to indicate whether the components are signed or unsigned. We need a dot to indicate whether this component is signed or unsigned. But we don't need any dot here because we know that overall vectors are always unsigned. This might already seem a little bit confusing to talk about signed numbers and magnitudes and dots and no dots. Uh, and well, uh, I'm sorry, this part of physics is a little bit confusing. Um, even though this is a portion of physics that the instructor usually really rushes past uh, very quickly in the first couple of weeks, um, when you're first learning this material, there, there actually are some rather confusing issues here, especially if you're, you're trying to get the signs right, which is uh, very important. Um, and uh, my experience is that we really need to have this notation um, to get problems right correctly and to get the signs right. Um, so there's no getting around it. There are some uh, confusing issues here with vectors, but I think that in the long run it's going to be less confusing to us if we use this invented symbol. So I hope that you're really going to give that uh, a shot and trust me a little and try using this symbol. And I'll keep, uh, if it's not 100% clear to you, um, how these symbols work yet, uh, don't worry. I don't expect um, what I've just said to be 100% clear yet. We're going to do a lot of examples, as usual. And at the end of the examples, things should be hopefully boringly clear to you. So don't panic if you haven't quite understood everything, every single thing that I've said yet.
Remember that our goal in this example was we didn't try to learn how to figure out the components. I just told you what the components were. I just told you they were three and four. All I wanted to go over here was notation. The purpose here was not to learn how to figure out the components, but just to go over notation. Uh, I just wanted to show you that we need two different notations for the components. Um, one notation for when it's a signed component and one notation for when it's just the magnitude. And we also saw that the components need to have arrows on them. So those were some preliminary things that we worked on in this little example.